Are you ready to get this day started? Well, Rise and Shine leaders, this is Glenn Guyton, keynote speaker and workplace trainer. It's time for our executive coffee break. I've got my beverage in hand. Hope you have yours too. They say you can't choose your family, but you can choose your workplace culture and you can choose your beverage. Well, today I am drinking tea. Why am I drinking tea this morning? I'm drinking my English breakfast tea once again uh, because I ran out of coffee. I don't have any coffee in the house. I bought groceries, but I didn't buy coffee, so I need some more coffee. Maybe I'll cut back on the coffee. This is our coffee break, but you can drink whatever you want. Coffee, tea, kombucha, whatever floats your boat. But I want you to know that leadership matters, so you might as well get good at it. I'm going to give you some tips this morning to help you get more better, more gooder as we think about leadership, particularly inclusive leadership and how we want to engage our teams and be more effective in the workplace. So I had something all planned for you this morning that I was going to talk about, something deep. Uh, I was doing some research on uh, conflict resolution and how we talk, uh, but then I got distracted. And I came across this post by Mina Kimes. You know, it's Super Bowl week. It's the week of the great game, uh, and a big game. And so um, I was reading something on ESPN, uh, on, on the X, on the Twitter, and uh, Mina Kimes was getting into it uh, with one of the with one of the, the trolls on on Twitter. And he said, he basically, the guy said, I don't care what Mina Kimes thinks because, you know, she's a great example of DWI gone wrong. And Mina Kimes, her comeback was DWI. What is that? Diversity while intoxicated. So I have to talk about it. I have to talk about drunk diversity. I, I think it's, I think sometimes in the workplace, I think that when we uh, started some of our diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts. We were we were drunk in the workplace, uh, and we got drunk because we were trying to do the most good. We didn't know what to do, uh, but we got a little, little we got a little drunk, uh, especially after what happened uh, with George Floyd and, and a lot of the the racial incidences that happened uh, during the global pandemic. You know, we had the defund the police movement we had a lot of stuff going on and uh at the time everyone everybody wanted to jump on the diversity equity inclusion bandwagon and we started i said we started doing it wrong we started doing too much we started doing the most and it was like we were drunk we hired all of these uh chief diversity officers in a lot of organizations and then two years later y'all fired them y'all did you didn't have a plan now, some companies, some organizations had a plan from the very beginning uh, about how they were going to incorporate diversity, equity, inclusion into their workplace, how, how it was going to improve the workplace culture. That's what we want to do, right? We want to improve the workplace culture. We want to drive engagement. We want to drive in innovation. That's why we're doing these things. It's not just about being woke. Uh, so I, I dropped a, a link in the... Information. So wherever you're watching this LinkedIn or if you're watching this on YouTube, it's a link in the the information to an article. I was interviewed by uh, a group called Welcome to the Jungle, and uh, we talked about being woke, what it what it meant. And uh, one of the things I said in that article was being woke initially meant an awakening of marginalized people, but woke has become a political term and has created division now in our in our culture. And so while yeah, words change, uh, and 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 attitudes and cultures change. So we have to be be mindful of them. Uh, and so read the, go check that article. I don't want to get too far into it, but I'll also put a link to an article that I wrote uh, about what types of diversity, equity, and inclusion training programs are right for the workplace. That's what we need to ask ourselves. What type of training? Period. And it, and I'll talk a little bit about this tomorrow. I think unless I get distracted again by the X, but. What type of training is, is is appropriate for the workplace? And again, after the the shootings, killings of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor, you know, we all jumped on this woke bandwagon uh, per, per se. But as business leaders, as 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 leaders of teams, we we want to continue to do good work. We don't want to just jump on something because. 
it's on in the media because it's on CNN or Fox News. We don't want to stop doing it because it's on either one of those channels either. Uh, so our the effectiveness of our diversity training depends on specific the specific method that we use, the characteristics of those that are being changed, or the culture of your workplace, and the specific outcomes uh, that that you want to have. Like what you're measuring, what is your what is your end game? What do you hope to accomplish? That should always be the question before we jump into something. We don't ever just want to do something because everyone else does it. Either we want to inform our people. Uh, we want to provide them with new, tangible, hard skills, or we could be just doing it as a PR PR uh, mechanism. And maybe that's what a lot of people were doing uh, 2020, 2021. Uh, people were just doing DEI. They really didn't care about it. They were just doing it for PR purposes, where everyone else is doing it. We better do it. But you did it wrong, and you made things worse. Uh, if you were doing that. Maybe that's not you. Maybe that's because my audience wouldn't do that, right? Those that are, are listening to me, you have a plan. So I outlined just some basic things you might want to consider uh, with any training, but especially when we think about diversity training. Um, one of the first levels that you want to start off with is just basic training to create awareness and knowledge in the workplace. Um, so you may not have an advanced workplace. I've worked with a number of companies. Some companies are just starting. They brought me in just to start. And those companies don't, I don't know. They don't. Sometimes they don't really have a plan. It's not part of their strategic outcomes. And so I do a one-off with them. Then I've had some companies where I speak all the time. I've trained all of their employees. They brought me back several times. I've spoken to different divisions. But they really have a strategic plan when it comes to diversity, equity, and inclusion. And I train them on very specific skills, skills that not only relate to diversity and inclusion, but skills that translate to other areas of the of their work, how to communicate, uh, how to uh, deal with things once they happen, because we will have challenges in the workplace. So how do you mitigate those challenges? How do you come up? How do you bring about effective and effective resolution? How do you document things? So there's some specific skills that still have that are wrapped with some some sense of cultural competency because we we all like to be talked to differently, right? We all have bias when it comes to uh, understanding and 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 sharing information and receiving information, and so supervisors need those skills in order to mitigate whatever conflict they may be having in the workplace. And sometimes it's not just conflict; it's conflict is just might be being aware of of uh, potential pitfalls. So I'll give you an example. I worked with one organization that, that does a great, great job of with its diversity, equity, inclusion programs, its, its training programs. And so we were we were talking about promotions and where there could be bias in, a, in the promotion process. And so one woman mentioned that she was the only woman on the team. It was good. She, was, she was getting promoted, going through the ranks. But there are some things about uh, the way they met and how they interacted that put her at a disadvantage. She was a primary caretaker in her family uh, for her for her child, and um, and a lot of the meetings were you know required travel and things like that. And so it was a little bit more difficult, more challenging for her to to get away. And typically in our society, men can just leave and you know we just leave our families. My wife might say, "Hey, you're on the road a lot too," you know, speaking and all that stuff. My kids are grown now, but. She might have something to say about when my kids were younger. Uh, but we need to be aware of that, right? Uh, hey, if everything is, we're always traveling, we're gone, gone, gone overnight, that may impact a certain demographic in your workplace. You need to be aware of that. Now, if you choose to say, hey, if you are a parent, whether you're a, a, a male single parent or female single parent or whatever, uh, you have to understand that all these trips away will impact people with young families in some way or another. Someone that's older or more established uh, with older kids like me may not be impacted. So there are a number of things that work. It's not just because she's a woman, right? It, it may be because of the age that, that uh, the person is in. Younger people tend to have young kids. Old people don't have kids, generally. Now, my dad was 62 when I was born. My biological father, father was 62 when I was born. So I, I'm the rare exception. So he he was an old man having having babies for so for some reason. Uh, anyway, I, I digress. But we have to understand how different things will impact our teams, and so if we have trained and formed 
employees, they can look out for these things. And so we can understand where there may be some discrimination, unintentional discrimination or bias in our system. And so we want to make people aware, give them knowledge, and that's some basic basic training that we can you can you can take part in. Then we have more uh, advanced training where we yeah where we're giving out these these specific skills and, and uh, again knowledge to people, helping them understand bias, how to accommodate uh, different people, uh, microaggressions and belonging. You, you know, I have a again you can go go to Amazon. I have a book on microaggressions that you can use with your team. You all can work through that that process. It has some exercises in there and some some case studies. So if you like that kind of thing, go to Amazon and get that book. It's a great team for uh, employee resource groups if you want to work through those things. And then we have, you know, more advanced training where you get into anti-racism, anti-oppression training, uh, how to engage your community. Uh, a lot of, of you working at jobs do engage the community. You want to do it in, in meaningful ways. Um, I know some um, organizations partner with other nonprofits, some for-profit co corporations partner with nonprofits to do a community service or to sponsor events and you want to do it in the right way and so that you may need some advanced training as you go out, go out and interact with other people because you want to build goodwill in the in the community right uh, most brands want to have a good reputation in the community so there are all types of, of, of additional training that you may need to help people make an adjustment because uh, if you think about it sometimes the only time time people have any kind of we'll say yeah, racial diversity or even diversity of thought is when they go to work. Because if you live in a community, typically you live in a community with people of the same social economic status. Many time, times it's the pe people with the same, you know, uh, maybe racial demographics. Not, all, not always, just depends on where you, where you live. But, you know, you kind of live around people that you are similar to. You go to church, if you go to church or whatever religious setting you go to, synagogue or temple, whatever you do. You normally go to, with people that are pretty much just like you. Yeah, yeah. religious set, uh, settings tend to be the least diverse uh, settings around in, in a lot of cases. So work is a place where people experience some type of difference, some type of diversity. And so you have to understand that we, we really aren't just naturally equipped to do these things uh, in regards to reaching out to, to others. And so we want to do it well. We don't want to be drunk and make bad decisions, drunk with trying to please people, drunk with uh, uh, media intoxication. We, we, wanna do, we don't want to do that. We want to make the best decisions that we can with our people. So check out those resources that I put in the description. Again, whether it's LinkedIn or if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, I, I put some information, a couple of links uh, to the article from Welcome to the Jungle. Also, my post about what type of uh, diversity training might be appropriate for you. And again, understand, ask yourself self the question, why am I doing this? Why am I interested in this? Do I want to keep my employees? Do I want to keep my employees happy? Are my employees asking for it? Or is the community that I'm a part of asking for it? Is it going to, how is it, how is it, this is going to help us? And I want you to have a broader view as we think about diversity, diversity of thought diversity of, of, of ability, cognitive diversity. Of course, there's always racial, gender, sexual orientation, uh, religious diversity, all of those things uh, to consider. Oh, and you may be wondering, hey, how can I, uh, yeah, yeah, how do I, I work through these things um, in the workplace a little bit better? You can always bring me in. I'm always available to help you uh, and your team navigate these things. But also just check out my website. Plenty of free resources on my website. Check out my blogs. A lot of good info, information on there. You, you don't even have to pay me. It, it's free. Uh, just a variety of things on uh, my website that can help you think about these things and think about what's next uh, before you start spending a whole lot of money, wasting a whole lot of time in the workplace. So check that out. And I appreciate you all joining me here every morning. So as we say goodbye for today, let's not forget the strength and perseverance that it takes to lead with empathy. I'm going to have to work on that, right? I have to, I'm going to have to say empathy better. Empathy and inclusivity, better leaders get better results. So to every one of you leading the charge for a more supportive and engaging workplace, I leave you with this. Stay bold, stay inspired, and remember that your actions today shape the culture 
of tomorrow. Thank you all. Have a great day.